What have I learned in more than 30 years of dancing? Well, you know, I've learned that first impressions are normally, in fact, most likely incorrect. Let me give an example. I thought when I started ballet at the age of eight in St. Teresa's College, um, in the, the school of um, dance of Felicitas Radaich, that ballet was easy. No, are you taking notes? Classical ballet is hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Why is classical ballet so hard? Well, first of all, all our movements have to be done with 180 degree turned out position. What is that? Well, that's the rotation of the right leg in the hip socket 90 degrees to the right and the rotation of the left leg in the hip socket 90 degrees to the left to make an angle of 180 degrees, okay? So, right now, I'm going to ask you to come out of your comfort zone, stand up everybody, and we will just try to follow simple instructions, okay? I'm not expecting perfection here, okay? Just follow simple instructions. Let's rotate our left leg so that all five toes are pointing to the left, okay? Then, you get your right heel and put it in front of the big toe of your left foot. To check if you are doing it correctly, look down, you should see a capital letter L made by your feet. So far, so good? Yes? Okay, now this is the hard part. Okay. While keeping our spines straight, our shoulders down, our chin up, and our knees straight, rotate your right leg so that the little toe of your right foot is touching the left heel. Are you comfortable? Really? No? Okay, wait. Just got getting started here. Now bend your knees and stretch. Yeah? Having fun? Uh, okay, sit down, sit down, everyone. Thank you so much for being such a great sport. What you did is called fifth position in classical ballet. There are five basic classical positions, classical ballet positions of the feet. Fifth position, well, this first position, second position, third position, fourth position, and fifth position. It goes the other way also, with third position, left foot in front, fourth position, left foot in front, and fifth position, left foot in front. Now you'll notice in all the positions, basic positions of the feet in classical ballet, my legs and my knees are facing the side. This is how we walk. This is how we run. This is how we land from a jump. This is how we turn in classical ballet with our legs in a 180 degree turn out. Why? I've had 30 years of dancing professional, professionally behind me. Despite all the dancing with my knees facing in front and I try to lift my leg to the side, I cannot lift my leg higher than 90 degrees. Turning out, knees facing the side, I can lift my leg higher and higher and higher and higher. Yeah. So turning out actually increases the range of motion of your legs. And for classical ballet dancers, for dancers in general, working with your body as the instrument of your art, we have to train six, eight, 12 hours a day in order to walk like ducks. Okay. <laughs> what else did I learn? Well, I learned that classical ballet did not start or did not have its roots in France, although all the steps in ballet are in French. It started in Italy as a court dance. And then it was brought to France by Caterina de' Medici when she married King Louis. And in fact, the first prima ballerinas 
were not ballerinas at all. They were men. They were dance. They were male dancers, and they were the kings, the the kings, the dukes, and the marquis, the royalty of the European court, because ballet did start as a court dance. Some ballets would go on for six days. Yes, some ballets would go on for six days. Okay, now, most of you think that classical ballet is only for the elite, right? Yeah, well it's not. It's now more available to the general public and it started with classical ballet being put on stage instead of as a court dance. And that and then it, it had to become the strictest and the most structured school of dance. And up to now, up to today, it is still considered the most difficult dance form to master because it is the strictest. There are just so many rules to follow. And for most dancers, it is easier to break the rules than it is to follow them, as you know. <laughs> okay, classical ballet also is ephemeral. You know, most artists have writers can leave behind a book that you can open and read any anytime. Visual artists, painters, photographers, they can leave behind a, an image that you can hang on your wall. Composers can leave behind a musical score that any orchestra can play in the future. Classical ballet dancers, ballerinas like me, I leave behind a memory. I leave behind the memory of me dancing for you. And despite technology with YouTube, and there's nothing like seeing and feeling the exchange of energy between the performer and the audience. There's nothing like that connection that you make during a live performance. And there's also nothing like watching the sweat trickle down my back while I am trying to make everything look easy. Classical ballet is very difficult, but unlike athletes, in fact, most ballet dancers are called, most dancers, in fact, are called performing athletes or artistic athletes. Why? Because we train our bodies to become strong and to do something that is unnatural and abnormal, but we need to make it look easy. Okay? So I hope that I leave you today with a great memory of uh, what classical ballet is like. Uh, and uh, also, I hope that after my short talk this afternoon, you will come and watch a ballet performance. Okay, so enjoy this little excerpt called The Dying Swan. It was choreographed by Mikhail Fokin uh, to the music of Saint-Saëns. Um, and uh, like most dancers, I am now going to tell you a story without having to say a single word. <laughs>